Tesla just built an electric motor that needs zero rare earth metals, the expensive materials every automaker said were impossible to replace. The shocking part? It's more powerful, more efficient, and far cheaper to produce. This changes everything. Longer range EVs at lower prices. No more range anxiety. But here's what really matters. China's control over rare earth supplies just became irrelevant. Companies like BYD built their advantage on these materials. What happens when that vanishes overnight? Is this pure innovation? Or is Tesla rewriting the entire EV market? Let's dive right in! To understand why this matters, we need to go back to how we got here. For over a decade, the EV industry operated on one premise. If you want powerful, efficient motors, you need rare earth metals. Period. Engineers accepted this as fact. Investors planned around it. Entire supply chains were built to serve it. But this fact created a hidden vulnerability nobody wanted to talk about. Rare earth metals aren't actually rare in the ground. What makes them rare is the brutal extraction process. Mining operations in China, which produces about 70% of global supply, have turned vast regions into environmental disaster zones. Yet every automaker kept using these materials because the alternative seemed impossible. The motors they enabled were compact, powerful, and efficient in ways no other technology could match. What made this truly dangerous wasn't just environmental cost. It was geopolitical reality. When one country controls the majority of a critical resource, they don't just have market share. They have leverage. Over the past five years, rare earth prices have fluctuated wildly, sometimes doubling within months. Automakers trying to hit affordable price points found themselves at the mercy of commodity markets they couldn't control. This wasn't just a business problem. It was a strategic weakness threatening the entire EV transition. So when Tesla announced they'd eliminated this dependency entirely, the industry's first reaction was skepticism. But as technical details emerged, that skepticism turned to something else. This wasn't incremental improvement. This was a fundamental redesign of how electric motors work. The brilliance lies in what they changed and what they kept. Traditional motors use permanent magnets, generating a constant magnetic field whether you need it or not. Tesla's approach uses electromagnets controlled by sophisticated software. The magnetic field appears exactly when needed, at precisely the right strength, then disappears. This dynamic control changes everything about motor efficiency. Now, if it was this simple, why didn't anyone do it before? The answer reveals why this took so long. Creating a magnetic field on demand requires incredibly precise timing. We're talking thousands of electromagnetic pulses per second, each calibrated to exact speed, load, and temperature conditions. The computing power and algorithms needed simply didn't exist 10 years ago. This became possible because of advances in power electronics and real-time processing that had nothing to do with motors originally. Here's where it gets interesting from an engineering perspective. Permanent magnets generate heat. That heat represents wasted energy. In traditional motors, you lose 15 to 20% of battery charge just to thermal waste. Tesla's electromagnetic system generates significantly less heat because it's only active when moving the car. Less heat means less energy wasted, which translates directly to longer range from the same battery. But there's a second benefit equally important. Lower heat generation means less aggressive cooling systems needed. Cooling adds weight. Weight requires energy to move. By reducing heat at the source, the entire vehicle becomes more efficient. 
My analysis suggests this could deliver 10 to 15% range improvement without changing anything else. For a car rated at 300 miles, that's an extra 30 to 45 miles per charge. That difference transforms how people use EVs. Let me put this in perspective. Range anxiety isn't really about the absolute number. It's about unpredictability. When people know they can reliably get 350 miles instead of 300, their entire mental calculus changes. That weekend trip no longer requires planning around charging stops. The vehicle becomes transportation instead of a logistics puzzle. This psychological shift matters more than the technical improvement. Now let's talk economics, because this is where real disruption happens. Rare earth metals add $1,000 to $2,000 to every EV's production cost. Remove that cost, and suddenly the economics change fundamentally. We're talking about the difference between a $45,000 vehicle and a $35,000 vehicle. That's the threshold where mainstream buyers start seriously considering EVs over gas cars. But here's what most analysts are missing. The cost saving isn't just about removing expensive materials. It's about eliminating supply chain complexity. When you don't need rare earths, you don't need to manage volatile commodity prices, specific supplier relationships, or inventory buffers against disruptions. The entire production process becomes simpler and more predictable. For manufacturers, that predictability is almost as valuable as direct cost savings. This brings us to the elephant in the room. China's position in the EV market was built on control of these materials. Companies like BYD invested billions in vertical integration from rare earth processing to finished vehicles. That strategy worked brilliantly when rare earths were mandatory. But what happens when they become optional? The entire foundation of that competitive advantage starts to crack. I've been watching BYD's response closely, and the silence is telling. No dismissal of the technology, no counter-announcement, no confident statements. In competitive markets, silence usually means concern. When your competitor makes your core strength irrelevant, there's no easy response. You can't attack the technology without acknowledging its validity. You can't ignore it without looking blindsided. The strategic implications extend far beyond two companies. European automakers caught between Chinese manufacturing efficiency and American technological innovation suddenly have an opening. They can now develop competitive EVs without depending on Chinese supply chains. For policymakers worried about strategic dependencies, this is exactly the breakthrough they've been hoping for. The same applies to emerging manufacturing centers in India, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. When motors no longer require rare earths, Barriers to entry drop significantly. We're likely to see new players emerge in markets previously locked out. More competition means lower prices and more innovation. But let's be honest about what this means for existing automakers. Every company that invested heavily in permanent magnet technology now faces a difficult choice. Do you write off those investments and pivot? Do you try extracting value from existing designs while developing next-generation systems? There's no good answer, and companies that choose wrong will pay in market share. My assessment is, we'll see the industry split into two groups over the next 24 months. Forward-looking companies will announce major initiatives to develop rare-earth-free motors, even admitting their current technology is becoming obsolete. Conservative companies will defend existing approaches, emphasizing proven reliability. Within five years, it'll be clear which strategy was right, and some brands we know today won't survive that transition. Now, let's address the question everyone's wondering. Is this about environmental responsibility or market domination? The answer is both. 
and that's what makes it so effective. Environmental benefits are genuine. Eliminating rare earth mining reduces habitat destruction, toxic waste, and carbon emissions. These motors make EVs cleaner across their entire life cycle. But pretending there's no strategic calculation would be naive. Tesla just made every competitor's recent R&D investment obsolete. They turned the industry's greatest vulnerability into their competitive moat. They created a situation where following their lead is the only viable path forward. That's not just good engineering. That's strategic mastery. This is classic Musk playbook. Find a problem everyone considers unsolvable. Solve it in a way that helps the planet while crushing competitors. Make your solution so obviously superior that resistance is futile. Then watch the industry scramble to catch up while you're already working on the next disruption. Here's what this means for you. Within three years, you'll start seeing EVs with 350-plus mile ranges priced under $30,000. The charging anxiety keeping you in a gas car will become a non-issue. The price premium for going electric will shrink to almost nothing. The question won't be, should I buy an EV? It'll be, which EV should I buy? That shift happens because of technologies like this motor. But I want to be clear about what this isn't. This is not the end of challenges for EVs. Battery costs still matter. Charging infrastructure still needs expansion. Cold weather performance still needs improvement. This motor technology solves specific problems brilliantly, but doesn't make other issues disappear. What it does do is remove a fundamental bottleneck constraining how fast, how far, and how affordably EVs could improve. That's the difference between incremental progress and breakthrough change. When you eliminate a limiting factor, the entire system can evolve faster. That's what we're seeing here, and that's why this matters so much more than just one company's motor design. So here's the bottom line. Tesla just eliminated the single biggest constraint holding EVs back. Not with better materials, but by making those materials obsolete. This isn't about one company winning. This is the entire industry reaching a tipping point where EVs become the obvious choice. Remember when we asked if this was innovation or strategy? The answer is both, executed perfectly. Tesla removed rare earth dependency, which slashes costs, extends range, and breaks China's supply chain control. All in one move. That's reshaping an industry. And this is just the beginning. Within three years, expect sub-$30,000 EVs with 350-plus mile ranges. Within five years, this becomes the standard. The automakers moving now will dominate. The ones waiting will struggle. Where do you think this leaves companies like BYD? Can they pivot fast enough? Or is their rare earth advantage about to become their biggest liability? Drop your thoughts below. If this analysis helped you understand what's really happening, smash that like button. Subscribe to Tech Revolution and hit the notification bell so you never miss our breakdowns of the innovations actually changing the game. The EV revolution isn't coming. It's here, and it's accelerating. This is Tech Revolution. Stay informed, and we'll see you in the next one.